This is a will-o'-the-wisp, a spooky, malevolent, magical entity most known for leading travelers astray and to their demise. Well, my take on it anyway. And in this video, I'm showing you how I sculpted this magical creature in not just one, but two colors, using glow-in-the-dark clay, pigments, natural materials, and my 3D printer. While we're at it, we'll learn about this fascinating creature in folklore. The Will of the Wisp has piqued the interest of the human imagination for centuries. They have a variety of names and descriptions across cultures, including ghost lights, glowing fairy beings, or even spirits of the dead. They're usually described hovering over bogs, marshes, streams, and floating around deep in the forest at night. Now let's go conjure up some of our own. <laughs> so to make this creature, I want to use glow-in-the-dark cos clay. I don't love the color of the clay in daylight for this project. I want my wisp to have a nice color when in the light as well as glowing in the dark. So I got the idea, what if I mix glowing pigment with glowing clay? I have these neat pigments from Solar Color Dust, and I'm going to experiment with mixing them into the cosplay and seeing what we get. It definitely made a mess, but I'm really pleased with how the color ended up. The glow is still very vibrant, and the clay has a really nice color now in the daylight. I've made this creature a few times in the past, and I usually sculpted them with a simple design so that I could easily cast them in resin. This time, since I'm playing with making them entirely in clay, I wanted to make the design a bit more intricate. When I was brainstorming how I wanted it to look, I went to one of my favorite insects for inspiration, the firefly, or fondly referred to in my childhood as lightning bugs. Believe it or not, the glowing butt parts on a firefly are actually called lanterns, and they light up through a process called bioluminescence. Larvae will flash the glow as a warning display, whereas adult fireflies use them to attract mates. Evidently, research has shown that males that flash brighter and more frequently are more attractive to females. How you doing? So I'm using the firefly's general anatomy to inspire the body of my wisp. Since I'm making two of these in different colors, I want to give each one a slightly different expression and personality. And now it's time to start adding on the arms and leggies. Will-o'-the-wisp is the most common name for a family of fairy beings characterized by their fiery light appearance and their tendency to lead nighttime wayfarers astray. However, there are many other names and descriptions of their behaviors that exist across cultures. The Latin name for the phenomenon is Ignis Fatus, Fatus, which means foolish fire. In one tale from England, it's considered to be a device of an evil spirit that would draw humans into an abyss of misery and fright, forever unable to feel <laughs> happiness again. The Irish version is called a jack-o'-lantern, and yes, it's connected to the origins of a familiar pumpkin carving tradition that we know and love today. The story is based on a man named Stingy Jack who tricked the devil out of stealing his soul and is doomed to roam the world between the living and the dead, with only a burning coal for light, which he placed into a carved turnip. Therefore, if someone saw a light in the woods at night, it could be Stingy Jack trying to lure people to their deaths in hopes of meeting the devil again. People then carved their own scary faces into turnips and eventually pumpkins to ward off Stingy Jack and other evil spirits, and the practice continues to be a signature tradition in our Halloween celebrations to date. Now that the wisp body has been sculpted, it's time to get to work on the wings. I found some cool cicada wing templates on Etsy and customized their coloration in Photoshop and printed them on transparency paper. To attach them to the sculpture, I'll be using colored wire along what I learned is called the costal region, which is the leading edge of the wing with two main veins called the costa and the subcosta. I also want to try to create a glowing effect with the wings, so I'm mixing more glow-in-the-dark pigment into UV resin, which I'll use to adhere the wire to the printed wings. I also think it makes a cool textured look to them. I build up the resin in a few layers and then cut off the rest of the transparency paper around them. Then it's time to glue the wire into the sculpture. And that's the finishing details of the wisp itself, so now it's time to charge it up in some sunlight and see the final glowing effect. We'll step into the basement laundry room to get somewhere really dark, and oh yeah, look at that glow. I'm so happy with how it turned out, and even the wings are glowing nicely. Now to repeat the process in blue, but I'm gonna spare you some of the details and fast forward a bit. We'll pick back up on the blue wisp with the facial details because I want to make each one unique. Green is a bit more scaredy, and blue is a bit more fun. I repeated the same steps with the wings, and voila! Now let's check out this one's glow, and bam! 
Oh, talk about a glow up, y'all. And now it's time to figure out a little habitat for them. In my past designs, I've always put them in little jars, but unfortunately with this new design, I feel like putting them in there is a bit inhumane. It's just a little too tight in there. I have some bigger jars, but the glass is thicker and not going to give the effect that I want. So when I can't find the accessories that I need, we're just gonna have to make it. But first I need a little more inspiration, so it's time to head back outside. I have an idea, but we need to walk over to the stream near my house to get a little sample. That's far enough. No thank you, no. Too cold, no thanks. No, no. No means no. Well, it looks like this is as far as we go because Bo decided to protest and ooh, look, cool mushrooms. Oh, oh, okay, I need to scoop up some of the bottom of the stream and yep, we got a great sample and I can take that back to the studio. Now my idea is to create a little watery-ish environment that looks like you scooped it up from hovering over the water along with some of the stream bottom with it. I'm designing the base using Nomad Sculpt on my iPad and then I plan to 3D print it so I can repeat the base design for each wisp. I'm trying to make this kind of clay-ish, sandy-ish looking container which I will fill with some rocks, moss, and resin. I'm not quite sure if this idea is too out there, but we're going for it. Now I will bring my creation to life. how the details turned out. So the next thing I have to do is make this look a little bit more like this vial of dirt and mud and clay and rocks that I scooped up from the stream. So I first need to prime the base, which I do with some acrylic gesso. Then it's time to start painting. I like to have real life references as much as possible, so I'm consulting my sample here periodically as I build up the color. Earlier we heard stories of the creature from England and Ireland, but there's even more names and tales out there. In Wales, they call it the Ethelstan, and their version is actually a type of trickster elf conjuring a fairy fire which they use to mislead wanderers into the bog and to their untimely doom. And back to the sculpture, after painting, I drilled a small hole into the base to glue in the wisp. Now I'm adding preserved moss around the wire and the bottom, as well as some little rocks to give it a cool aquatic environment look. I'm then bringing it all together with UV resin so the wisp looks like it's hovering over and even emerging out of the water. I repeated the same process with the blue one and that's it my friends, my will of the wisps are complete. I hope you enjoyed watching my process and learning about the history and lore of this magical entity. I shared with you just a snapshot of the tales and myths that exist about the Will of the Wisp. What stories and other names of this being have you heard of? I'd love for you to tell me in the comments. Liking this video helps get it out to more people to see, and don't forget to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any of my future creations.